Okay, we're now going to start looking at the large signal behavior of a source coupled pair in a little bit more detail than we did before. So we have our source coupled pair here consisting of M1 and M2, and we're saying that the transistors and the resistors are of equal size. Uh, the uh, transistors are biased by a current source, ID, and we have a differential input voltage. And so we're going to start defining uh, the the, uh, this in terms of a difference current, which is equal to the difference in drain current between I, uh, dr M1 and M2. And this is, of course, going to be a function of VID uh, because we're going to be basically changing the gate to source voltage, uh, the current sources. So we're going to define uh, K prime as mu N times C aux times W over L. And if we do this, we can write VGS1 and VGS2 uh, in terms of K. Now again, we're assuming that there aren't any geometry errors uh, in these uh, transistors uh, or any doping errors. So VTH is equal in both transistors. Okay, if we do a KCL, or sorry, a KVL around uh, the loop here, we can write VID is equal to VGS1 minus VGS2, and we can uh, do a substitution of the VGSs that we just developed. Okay, we still have our uh, mismatch statistics that we were talking about in the last slide, uh, which was delta ID is equal to ID1 minus ID2, and ID is equal to the average of the two currents. So if we substitute in ID1 is equal to ID plus delta ID over 2, and ID2 is equal to ID minus delta ID over 2 into the expression we just developed, we can get that the differential input voltage is equal to square root of 2 divided by k prime minus Okay, and with some algebraic manipulation, we can write this in terms of delta ID. Okay, if we assume that we're going to have relatively small differential voltage swings uh, to cause a small change in current, then we can write that that VID term goes to zero. And we're left with
Now this looks an awful lot like our expression that we developed for overdrive voltage. It's not quite the same, but it's very similar. And what this is saying is that our change in current is going to be dependent upon the overdrive voltage, uh, uh, essentially. Okay, with this, we can take that expression and plot a set of uh, curves for delta ID versus VID. And what we would find is that our curves would look something like this. So we have ID1 and ID2. And this is for, say, a VOV prime. Now, if we change the VOV by changing the geometry of the transistor uh, or the, uh, the ID uh, going through it, uh, we can, of course, change the slope of that characteristic. Of course, in either case, the currents when VID is equal to zero meet in the middle and they're equal to ID over two. But uh, we can uh, discern a couple of things from here. Uh, one is that if we use a VOV that is smaller, we get a smaller usable range for the device. So our usable range is only really where the currents uh, are changing. So we can see if we use the VOV one prime case, we get, or, or really what we're saying is if we use a larger VOV, we get more usable range. We can also find out the large signal transconductance of our device. So if we look at the slope of these curves, this is essentially big GM. So big GM we defined in the past as delta ID by change in voltage. In this case, it's the change in differential voltage VID. Okay. We're going to look in the next set of slides at changing the type of load that we're using to an active load to mimic what we've done earlier in our transistor amplifiers, and that is to use active loads rather than resistors to increase the gain.